Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Supposed to get some storms today, they're saying. A chance of strong thunderstorms here in a few hours. So I thought I'd get out and get a little walking done before it starts pouring on me. This has been a, a really busy week and I'm only, only just now halfway through it. It's just been busy lately. Uh, stuff here at the house, just normal things, you know, homestead stuff, fixing things, making things, that kind of stuff, preps and general, general little small farm things, but busy with just all the stuff that I do and trying to help people with phone calls and got several of them I've had to do, meeting with people in person, tons of emails to respond to and I mean, that's just kind of how this goes as I try to make myself as available as I can to people. And I think it's a, it's a sign of, of just how bad things are starting to get. People are starting to get really concerned. And I'm getting more and more to the point that, it, and I'm not, I'm not complaining, please don't get me wrong. Um, that it's just almost overwhelming. I mean, I'm do we're doing the best we can. My wife helps with emails and stuff to keep up, but it just is what it is. And man, it's just it's just a lot. There is silver linings in that clouds. And I just wanted to tell you something that happened uh, this past weekend at our our local meeting. And this kind of thing is this isn't the first time something like this has happened. This is actually happened several times, but each time is special. Um, family came to the meeting for the first time, and I believe it was the grandmother uh, brought her grandsons, little little boys, just cute as can be. This little boy, I don't know, probably four years old, and maybe three, something like that. And she said, he's been wanting to tell you something. He said he has a secret to tell you, but he won't tell anyone what that is. He says he has to wait and see you and tell you. So, of course, I get down on my knees and so I can get down to his level. He looks up at me with these beautiful blue eyes and he says, I really love you, Travis. And in that moment, everyone around just about got to see the six foot two hairy gorilla guy almost break down in tears because boy I'm pretty tough and I don't show a lot of emotion but stuff like that just about that's just about I'm, I'm past my threshold of holding back the emotion then I'm not saying that to get an emotional reaction or to you know praise me in any way I'm saying that because it was a reminder to me, once again, that what I'm doing, and also what you're doing, even though you're not on YouTube, that we have little ones all around us. And even though we're going through some pretty traumatic times right now, things that are stressing us out, things that may be pushing us to the edge, because we're just so uncertain of what's going on and how it will affect us, that we still must be an example for the little ones around us. I was in a men's Bible study last night, and this was generally the topic that we have to purify ourselves on a regular basis, on a daily basis, so that we can be the protectors and the leaders and the examples that we need to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Many of us train for physical things. You know, I'm getting out, walking as often as I can, a few miles a day, get my body in shape, just in case, just in case things get so bad that I have to be more physical and do things. That's why I carry things like this on occasion. Gets, gets myself used to it. My body is conditioned, creating muscle memory of how to move around and, and, and not be so cumbersome and, and, and it doesn't get in the way as much because I'm used to it. That, that's the training that we, many of us are doing. 
Maybe your training is learning a new skill or becoming a little bit more self-sufficient. We have to remember we have to train our, our spiritual walk too. And not just for ourselves, but because we are leading others. Whether you're the head of a home, the mother, the father, whatever. Maybe the grandparents, maybe the uncle. Maybe you don't have any children, but there's just children around you because, well, there are children everywhere. And if you haven't noticed lately, there's not a lot of good examples in this world anymore for children to look to. Pretty much everywhere in a child's life that's not very protected by the parents, it's filled with just evilness. And you may be that one good example in some child's life. So I encourage you to be of good character and to constantly work on removing removing the impurities in your life because not only are you going to need it with the things that are happening in this world but those around you need to see an example and especially these little ones because they're going to be scared too their world's already changing and it's going to change even more and we need to be solid examples for them and I just I wanted to share that with you because like I said it's happened a few times something similar to that people that whether they come to the meeting or I meet them and or even just emails and they tell me that their whole family watches or their their children watch there's an, another family they're actually personal friends and they have a little girl she's uh, just a year old <laughs> and he said every time we watch one of your videos the little intro music boy she turns and looks you know she's got to stop and watch <clears throat> and that that tells me that the responsibility that I have of what I do is while it may be entertaining and uh, it may be somewhat newsworthy you may be getting a little bit of little nuggets out of it but <clears throat> it tells me that there are children out there that I have to be a good example because there's more than just my children watching me. So it encourages me to do better and to watch what I say and how I behave and how I react. It's kind of like I tell my children all the time. Your character isn't based on how you behave when your parents are around or when other people are around or you're trying to you know, look good for them. That's not what your character is based on. Your character is based on how you behave when you think no one is watching. That's the real you. And so, just because I don't see anyone, I know that there are people watching. And I believe it's the same way with you. You may not have a YouTube channel, but there are people, young eyes, watching us all the time, whether we know it or not. And let us set a good example of what a strong, courageous, righteous person should behave like. Because these children nowadays, they get very, very little of that example in most of their lives. Switching gears, because I thought I'd talk about two separate things today. <clears throat> Did you see that Belarus announced in the last couple of days that uh, 150,000 of its citizens are considered part of home defense, the, 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 the national defense. Now the news media, especially American news media, is kind of spinning this that they're basically being drafted into the National Guard. But if you read the what they're doing, that's not the case at all. They're not going into any kind of military service. In fact, it says that you can go ahead and stay home, can keep doing your jobs, but we're going to issue all of you a military rifle and you may be called to defend the homeland if we get invaded. And there's rumors of uh, Ukraine, Ukrainian troops um, massing on Belarusian borders and all this talk of, 
you know, is Belarus going to be next or Moldova or whatever? The point is, regular people, citizens, normal people that can defend their homeland, folks, that's a militia. That's exactly what that is. And maybe they don't have the Second Amendment what we do, but, you know, natural law is natural law. Just because it's not recognized everywhere doesn't change what it is. You and I are the same way. We're part of that. And there may come a day that that is needed, whether it be foreign or domestic. And I know that the media and the education system and society in general has tried to blemish any concept of what it means to be a militia. And I'm not talking about many of these groups that, oh, I hate to be condescending, but go off on the weekend in the woods and may not portray what that really is. I'm talking about you and I, citizens, people, humans, that have the inalienable right to defend ourselves and our homes and our communities. And you should take that serious because while it's not guaranteed by any means, the way things are, are working out in the world, that concept may come to be necessary in the coming weeks and months. We just don't know. And again, like with many other things, we would be foolish to not be our, find ourselves preparing for that possible scenario also. So, <clears throat> this isn't politics. This isn't anything to do with all the garbage that the media and everything puts out about how these radical homegrown blah blah blah. This is just you and I realizing that we have an obligation and a duty to protect our homes, our families, and the communities around us. And we should be preparing for that because it's quite possible this is the first time in American history where there is actually a potential threat of that. Not saying it's gonna happen, but I honestly can't think of a time in American history, maybe with the exception of the War of 1812 and then of course the Civil War, but that was a little different, that Americans needed to take their safety and security serious in regards to foreign and domestic threats. And so regardless of your skills, your knowledge, your physical condition, your abilities, your training, you should be thinking about that. You should be thinking about what would you do in that situation. I mean, I'm not saying it would happen this way, but the 80s movie Red Dawn portrays a, a decent Hollywood scenario of what it might be like if Americans were put in a position that they had to defend themselves and they didn't have a, a, a government that could be trusted to rely on or a government that was capable to rely on. And so in your preps, uh, in your daily life, and the things that you're just doing to get ready, you need to be thinking about that. And I'm not just talking about defense from some bad guy tweaker that wants to break into your barn and steal something. I'm talking about the possibility that we as Americans may find ourselves individually and privately working on defending the homeland, defending our land, defending our communities. And we should be thinking about that 
if nothing else, at least in the back of our minds. And what we can be doing to get prepared, to train, to acquire the goods, to do those things. Because it's going to be very different than anything we've seen in our, our past. If, if, we, if we find ourselves in a situation where we have to really defend ourselves. Supply chains aren't going to be there. You know, backup reserve troops aren't going to be there. It's just going to be us protecting ourselves from bad people that want to do us harm, regardless of where those bad people come from. And I just want to encourage you to be doing the things to get yourself ready for that. But going back to the original topic, also remember <clears throat> to be a good example, even in these troubled times, even with the pressure that's on us, that, that may be pushing us to beyond our what we believe is our capacity. We still have an obligation to the innocent eyes that, that look up to us to be a good example. Folks, it's time to get your houses in order to prepare mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.